Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to undertake an independent samples t-test assuming equal population variances. Okay. Maybe just to keep in mind that any time we have to undertake an independent samples t-test that there's two variants of the independent samples t-test. There's one where we assume that the sample data or both samples have been drawn from populations that have the same population variances. And there's another variant of the independent samples t-test where we assume that the two samples have been drawn from populations that have different population variances. And to decide, to, to, I suppose, to decide on which version of the t-test, of the independent samples t-test to undertake, it's important that you proceed the test with an f-test. The f-test is a test that allows you to test whether your two variances have been drawn from populations that have the same population variance, uh, or whether they've been drawn from populations that have unequal population variances. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, we're assuming only we're assuming equal population variances. In a previous video, I've run the F test for this particular scenario, and the F test uh, told us that there was insufficient evidence to reject the null position in favour of the alternative. Uh, so we are proceeding under the assumption of equal population variances. Just keep a note that our sample sizes are are, are relatively small here, uh, but just for this particular purpose, I'm keeping I'm keeping the numbers small uh, just for the for the and calculation. Okay, uh, like any test, hypothesis test, there's four stages to the test. Uh, the first stage is to define the hypothesis. Okay, so step one is our hypothesis. And the hypothesis is always a statement about the population parameters. Okay, in this case, it's a statement about the population means that both samples have been drawn from. Uh, we have a null hypothesis and we have an alternative hypothesis. Uh, and for this, in this particular scenario, uh, we're just going to try to test to see whether the two samples have been drawn from populations that have different population means. Okay? So I want to test whether the population means are different. In other words, whether the population mean for mu1 is different to the population mean for mu2 or for sample 2. So the null position is that we assume that the population means are equal. Uh, in a later video, I uh, will do a, a number of variants of this particular test where we assume some form of directionality with respect to the relationship between the two population variances, where we might hypothesize that the average or the mean of the first population is greater than the average of the second population, or we might hypothesize that the average of the first population is less than the average of the second population. Okay? So there's a number of ways that we can do this. At this stage, we're just doing the straightforward version where we assume the populations have been drawn from populations that have the same the same mean value. So the alternative is, all we have to show is that one is less than the other, or the other is greater than the other, or less than the other, or whatever, whatever way we want to do this. So this is actually a two-tailed test. Okay? Uh, the second stage in relation to our hypothesis test is to define our significance level that's associated with the test. In our case here, we're just going to define a significance level of alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay. Just let's keep in mind what this means. Uh, the significance level of alpha being equal to 0 0.05 means that if we do reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative hypothesis, uh, that we will only incorrectly do that 5% of the time. Okay, so we're controlling here for an incorrect decision when we do a re when, when we when we do a rejection of the null hypothesis. Another way to think about this, uh, uh, now it's probably a little bit looser, this particular, this particular way of thinking of it, it is that if I do reject the null in favour of the alternative, I'm somewhat, I'm 95% confident that I've made the right decision, okay? but let's just keep in mind that we might be wrong 5% of the time. Okay? So that's another alternative way to consider what the significance level represents. Okay. Uh, the next stage is to define the test statistic. Okay, so three or test statistic. And uh, now the test statistic for an independent samples t-test looks quite complicated looking. Uh, but let me maybe write it down. It says that t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 all over sp squared over n1 uh, plus sp squared over n2. And it's the square root of that particular value there. Uh, where 
where sp squared, this pooled variance measure, where sp squared is equal to n1 minus 1 times s1 squared, in other words, the sample size for the first sample minus 1 times the variance of the first sample, plus n2 minus 1 times s2 squared, divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay. So before we can actually calculate the t-statistic, we need to calculate this measure of pooled variance, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take all the variance and all the observations and throw them into a bag together, the 12 observations and the 14 observations, and we're going to calculate a new measure of the variance that we believe is associated with, uh, that's, that's associated uh, with this particular population, okay? So to calculate the variance, sp squared, uh, so we have sp squared is equal to, well, it's the first sample size, which is 12 minus 1 times the first variance, which is 5, uh, plus it's the second sample size, and 2 minus 1, which is 14, minus 1 times the second variance, which is 11, divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2, so it's 5 plus 14 minus 2. Okay, now when I do this on the calculator, we end up with, at the top, 12 minus 1 is 11, times 5 is 55, plus 14 minus 1 is 13, uh, 13 times 11 uh, added on to the 55 gives us a value of 198. So we end up with sp squared is 198, divided by 5 plus 14 is 19, minus 2 gives us 17. So our estimate for the pooled variance is going to be 11, 11 11.647, or I'm just going to say it's approximately equal to it's approximately equal to 12 in this case. I'm just rounding to the to the whole number, okay? Just to make this calculation a little bit more manageable, yeah, by hand, okay? So now that we've calculated the pooled variance, we can move on and we can calculate the test statistic. So we know that the test statistic t is equal to the difference between the two pieces of evidence. So it's x1 bar minus x2 bar, okay? So it's 35, it's 35 minus 46, okay? Plus, it's mu1, mu2, okay? So the test statistic tells us the distance between the evidence and our hypothesized null position. Okay, you can see that mu1 minus mu2 under the null hypothesis. Well, we have mu1 is equal to mu2, so mu1 minus mu2, mu1 minus mu2 is going to be equal to zero. So actually, what we need to add on here is zero. Okay, so it has no effect in this case. Now it doesn't have to be zero. We could, for more advanced hypotheses, uh, hypothesize that there's a specific difference between.